In the quiet suburban landscape of San Diego, California, a chilling scene unfolds on the night of November 6, 2000. The tranquility of the night was broken by the distressed voice of a woman named Kristen Rossum. Aged just 25, she made a frantic call to emergency services from her home. Her voice trembled as she reported a grim discovery. Her 26-year-old husband, Gregory de Villers, lay lifeless, showing no signs of breath. Kristen claimed that Gregory had tragically taken his own life. As the chilling words of Kristen's distress call echoed through the line, the emergency dispatcher quickly advised her to perform CPR, hoping against hope to revive the young man. Kristen, battling her own shock and panic, did as directed, pressing down on her husband's chest, breathing life into his unmoving form, praying for a miracle. The quietude of the suburban night was soon shattered as sirens wailed in the distance, growing louder as they neared Kristen's home. The first responders arrived, their faces grim, their movements swift. Paramedics took over from Kristen, their practiced hands moving with an urgency that underscored the gravity of the situation. Police officers stood by, their expressions somber, their minds racing to piece together the events of the evening. In those tense moments, as the paramedics fought to bring Gregory back from the brink, time seemed to stand still. Each passing second was a desperate battle against the inevitable. Each failed attempt at revival a stark reminder of the fragility of life. Yet despite the relentless efforts, the heartbreaking truth dawned on everyone present. Gregory de Villers, a young man in the prime of his life, could not be revived. The paramedics, their faces etched with defeat and sorrow, declared the time of death. Despite all efforts, Gregory de Villers, a young man of 26, was pronounced dead, marking the beginning of a heartbreaking and shocking mystery. To understand the depth of this tragic event, we must first delve into the lives of Gregory de Villers and Kristen Rossum. Our tale begins when Kristen, a vivacious redhead with a passion for science, met Gregory, a man known for his kindness and a heart as big as his dreams, at a college party in San Diego. Their connection was immediate and before long they were inseparable, their bond as strong as the Pacific waves crashing onto the nearby shores. Their love story was one for the books, a whirlwind romance that quickly escalated into a full-blown relationship. Kristen, with her love for roses, and Gregory, a man who would do anything to make her happy, were a match made in heaven, or so it seemed. In the year 2000, the couple decided to tie the knot in a ceremony as beautiful and vibrant as their love. However, underneath the surface, their relationship was not as picture-perfect as it appeared. There were ups and downs, highs and lows, just like any other couple, but there were also peculiarities, certain aspects of their relationship that were, well, unusual to say the least. Gregory, despite his affable nature, was a man of mystery. He was secretive, often retreating into his own world, a world that Kristen was not a part of. This peculiar behavior of Gregory's started to raise eyebrows, but it was brushed off as mere quirks of his personality. Kristen, on the other hand, was struggling with her own demons. Despite her cheerful demeanor, she was battling inner turmoil. She was overwhelmed by her demanding job at the toxicology lab and was wrestling with addiction. But these struggles were kept hidden behind closed doors, unseen by the world. As time passed, the cracks in their seemingly perfect relationship began to widen. The peculiarities that were once brushed off started to take a sinister turn. What was once a passionate love story was slowly transforming into a chilling tale of deception and betrayal. Their seemingly normal life would soon turn into a horrifying nightmare. In the wake of Gregory's sudden demise, the local police embark on an investigation that would soon reveal a web of deceit and betrayal. The police, initially treating the case as a suicide, began to notice details that didn't quite fit the narrative. The scene was oddly pristine, almost too perfect. The lack of a suicide note was also unusual, given the apparent forethought that would have gone into such a calculated act. And then there was Kristen, the bereaved wife, whose behavior struck them as peculiar. Kristen's demeanor was oddly calm, almost detached in the face of such a tragic event. She seemed more concerned with the police's intrusion into her home than with the loss of her husband. Her emotions appeared rehearsed, her sorrow lacked depth. This was not the behavior of a grieving widow, but perhaps of someone with something to hide. 
As friends and family were interviewed, a picture began to emerge that painted Kristen in a different light. She was described as manipulative, a master of deception, a woman who would stop at nothing to get what she wanted. And what she wanted, it appeared, was not Gregory, but her boss with whom she was having an affair. The toxicology report provided the most damning evidence. Gregory had not died from an overdose of his own medication, as Kristen had claimed. Instead, he had been poisoned with a lethal dose of fentanyl, a powerful opioid. This drug was not something Gregory had access to, but Kristen did. As a toxicologist by profession, she had the knowledge and the means to administer such a poison. The family, suspecting foul play, had already enlisted the help of a private investigator. Their suspicion seemed to be confirmed when they discovered a cache of love letters between Kristen and her boss hidden away in her office. As the veil of normalcy started lifting, investigators found themselves in the midst of a lethal love triangle. As they delved deeper, they would uncover a twisted tale of love, deceit, and cold-blooded murder. But that's a story for another scene. The investigation took a daunting turn when the toxicology report of Gregory de Villers was finally revealed. In the clinical silence of the lab, the toxicology report lay bare. It wasn't just a standard autopsy. It was an unraveling of a mystery that had begun to grip the city of San Diego. The report was clear. Gregory de Villers hadn't died of a drug overdose, as initially thought. His system was riddled with a lethal poison. Fentanyl, a potent synthetic opioid 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. In the midst of grappling with this revelation, another piece of the puzzle fell into place. The investigators discovered that Kristen Rossum, Gregory's wife, worked in a medical examiner's office, an environment where she had easy access to this potent poison. What was initially a case of apparent suicide began morphing into a sinister plot of murder, but the shocking revelations didn't stop there. As the investigators dug deeper, they unearthed a tangled web of deceit. Kristen was not the grieving widow she portrayed herself to be. Her pristine image began to shatter as the truth of her extramarital affair with her boss, Michael Robertson, came to light. A chilling pattern started to emerge. The poison, the affair, the distress call, they all pointed towards one person, Christine Rossum. She had not only betrayed her husband's trust, but was now suspected of orchestrating his untimely demise. As the pieces of this complex puzzle started to fit together, the San Diego Police Department made a decisive move. Kristen was arrested and charged with the murder of her husband. The woman who had stood by Gregory's lifeless body, claiming to be a devastated wife, was now behind bars, accused of the most heinous act. The once loving wife, Kristen Rosum, was now the prime suspect in the murder of her husband, Gregory de Villers. In a courtroom filled with anticipation, the final verdict in the case of Gregory de Villers was about to be delivered. The atmosphere was thick with tension as the court proceedings unfolded. Witnesses took the stand, their voices echoing through the room as they recounted the events leading up to that fateful November night. Each testimony added a layer to the complex tapestry of events, the pieces of the puzzle gradually falling into place. Kristen Rossum, the woman at the center of it all, sat in stoic silence, her eyes never leaving the floor. The prosecution presented a compelling case, weaving together the strands of evidence with expert precision. They highlighted the toxicology reports that found lethal amounts of fentanyl in Gregory's system, a drug that Kristen, a toxicologist, had easy access to. On the other hand, the defense attempted to sow seeds of doubt, questioning the validity of the evidence and painting Kristen as a grieving widow, not a cold-blooded killer. They pointed to the lack of a clear motive, but the prosecution countered with evidence of an illicit affair and a potential life insurance payout. In the gallery, friends and family of Gregory de Villers sat with bated breath, their faces a mask of hope and fear. Each word, each piece of evidence, each accusation was a dagger to their hearts, a stark reminder of the man they had lost. The emotional impact of the trial was palpable. Tears were shed, prayers were whispered, and hearts were heavy with the impending verdict. The jury, after days of deliberation, finally returned. The four-person rose 
A piece of paper clutched tightly in their hand. Silence descended upon the courtroom. The moment had arrived. The judge, a stern figure in black robes, asked for the verdict. The foreperson cleared their throat, their voice steady as they read the verdict aloud. The words hung in the air, a chilling finality that echoed through the silence. In a shocking turn of events, Kristen Rossum was found guilty, bringing a harrowing closure to the heartbreaking case of Gregory de Villers.